But the more, mo most important short statement that I can make to you is we tried to help work our way through this process thoughtfully, with integrity, and based on the idea that there are many people in our community who are in need, and we cannot continue to sacrifice needy people on that altar. I have to ask you about two topics that have haunted Oakland for decades, as well as many other cities, safety and education of the young. Is Oakland a safer place today? Absolutely. Five, four years down the road, Oakland is a safer city than it was. Bell, remember, during the time I was campaigning, on the front page of the Oakland Tribune, there was 145 faces, all of them people of color, most of them males, that had been killed in Oakland, 145. In December of this year, four years later, the last number I looked at was 70. Now that's 70 too many. But 145 and 70, that sounds like over 55% drop in four years. So that went down. In the three years that we started to access resources with outreach workers and other things, the actual crime rate went down three consecutive years. So I can say to you, straightforward, straight-faced, that this city is safer today than it was four years ago or five years ago. That is a matter of fact. You don't have to take my word for it. Those are facts, that's factual information that's there. You don't see 145 faces on the front page of the Oakland Tribune. Very interesting thing. I think maybe only one periodical had the audacity to say, well, thank the guy. Is it, you know, now, if the crime rate was going up, you'd be beating them half to death. Crime rate goes down, you don't give them credit. So, so you, you deal with a double standard. But it, it, it's not about me, but what I'm saying is we put together with community a strategy that Bevel, we refer to it as PIES, P-I-E-S, which stands for Prevention, Intervention, Enforcement, and Sustainability. And that comprehensive, multi-pronged approach actually worked. Community people helped develop it. We came together as community. We put it together as community, and that strategy has worked. Now, if we hadn't been in this economic downturn that we're in, I mean, it staggers the imagination what could have been done if we had still been in the great bubble, but we weren't. So we had to make decisions. But even in that, we still managed to stay a course that made this city safe. What about education? Has Oakland been able to, well, it's, it's moved because it's, it's no longer uh, in, in bankruptcy, uh, back running its own boat, ship again. Um, have you had a chance to concentrate on what could be done or is being done to Absolutely. improve educational opportunities? Well, number one, I don't believe in the mayor's takeover of school boards. That's number one. That's my politics. That's my philosophical view. When we came in, our advocacy was return the schools to local control. And we were strong advocates, strong supporters. We were verbal. We were out there. We helped push that curve. That's number one. Number two, I remember we sat down with Atlantic Foundation and Kaiser Foundation, and we said, look, we need wraparound services to schools that our young people are confronted with health issues and counseling issues and other issues. And when, when they have to leave the campus for these services, you tend to start losing people. So with the aid of the Atlantic Foundation and Kaiser Foundation, we were able to put together a multi-million dollar three-year grant that put wraparound health services and other services in a number of schools in this city. The objective was to take this model and hopefully create this model for all of our schools. Well, bottom drops out of the economy, but we did that. That's on the record. We got a few million dollars for an interesting program that we called Teach Tomorrow in Oakland. That was a, oh, that was a program that came out of the mayor's office, working with, uh, with um, teachers' unions and other organizations 
and the Oakland Unified Schools, we put that together. We got additional resources to work on school dropouts. We got young people to act as intermediaries to say to other young people, come back to school. It was an exemplary program. It brought a number of people back in. The, and I can go on, but the point I'm making is what I saw was not the mayor taking over the school system, but the mayor and the city had, the mayor had a responsibility to help bring the community to the schools. There's an old adage that a community is only as great as its school system. All right? So I said, what is our role? Is it to be critical of the school system or the school board, or is it our role to come and try to be together with them? I think if you ask some of the school board members, they will say to you, they came to partner with us. The superintendent will say, they came to partner with us. And that's what we did. Our job was to try to bring our services and help bring the community to the schools and to try to be as helpful and as expansive as possible with the dropout program, with the teacher recruitment program. We, we had, we, we, we had uh, events right here in this building to attract people into teaching, to try to remove the bureaucratic and financial entanglements for licensing that retard the ability of people to teach. So we did a number of things that, that I think are terribly important about education. At the end of the day, the school system carries a very great burden, but this is something that the entire community has to deal with. Last point, we brought also in uh, working, uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we work with the Peralta School District. We often talk about our four-year institutions, but I think our community colleges really are the flagship of education at this level because they're accessible, they're affordable, and they're flexible. And we worked with them in the Green Jobs Corps effort, in, 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 in uh, career opportunities for young high school seniors. So we did work hard in education. You have to talk about the Green Job Corps because jobs are the focus of every urban city now, especially for young uh, African-American males uh, who are highly, the highest unemployed group in the country. So talk about what Oakland has done for them or is doing for them. Okay. Quick backdrop. Everybody keeps banging the table. We need jobs, jobs, jobs. Somebody, a wonderful woman taught me way back in the 60s a very important thing that I never forgot. She said, Ron, jobs are not created in a vacuum. Jobs are the byproduct of a community or a society's commitment to solve other problems. You address the problem, the byproduct is employment. You can't just go wave a wand for jobs. Okay, with that in mind, climate change is a major problem. Now, there are a number of people out there that, you know, don't think all this stuff is mythology, but if you, if you listen to great scientists and environmentalists, it's all there, all right? So dealing with the challenges of the greening of our community, the greening of our nation, the greening of our planet is very important. So in addressing those problems, you create employment. All right, for example, you want to use uh, solar panels, to get away from you know, more expensive uh, use of fuel, you train people to do that. You want to make homes more energy efficient by weatherizing their homes, you train young people to be able uh, to do that. You want to make downtown buildings and public buildings more energy efficient, then you train people to do that. You want to construct buildings based on principles of greening, then you train people to do that. These jobs are there. Finally. Uh, another uh, uh, example, and this is one of the things that I've uh, been trying to say to the Obama administration, don't just focus on the infrastructure for the last century. Let's focus on developing infrastructure for the next century. The electric cars, for example, strike a blow at climate change. It allows you to move away from energy dependence, and it brings billions of dollars back home. Train young people to be able to Im install, maintain, and repair the infrastructure we're, for the we're, electric we're, we're car. We're down to our, our last few minutes now. Okay, I'm sorry. One, last, I, I thing I, one last thing I want to ask you about, though. Is there a lament? Is there a moment that you wish you could have reversed? 
Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> Here's one that I can think about okay. real quick. We have to make it quick. Okay. I remember the first time I gave my first, um, you know, the hundred and some days, and I went out in the community, and I made the statement, but I'm not a media guy. The local press interpreted that as being anti-press when I was only describing who I am as a guy who, you know, that's just not my temperament, right? Mm -hmm. So they interpreted it, so it became, it became urban legend that this guy is hostile toward the press, and I think that that created a climate that was not conducive to communication, but it was based on fallacy. It was based on mythology. You know, it was like that, that song, you're so vain, you think this statement is about you. <laughs> but it wasn't about them. But, it, but it, it became part of the lexicon, became part of their psyche. And I think that's the way they began to mm -hmm. look at us. So if there was any lament, it would be that I could, that we could erase that. Okay. Well, it's not that we haven't given you the chance, but we are down to the last few minutes. You are completing over 35 years of service to this city, to your country. Um, your term at, uh, as mayor is coming to a close, and so we're going to allow you at this moment, if you can, to tell us whatever your thoughts are as you uh, begin to make this move. Number one, Cynthia and I were totally unselfish in this process. We gave of ourselves. This woman was brilliant as my partner, not, not as my wife, that's, that's given but as my senior advisor in public-private partnership, uh, my chief confidant, person that was part of helping me figure out how to do these things on a process level, that was very important. Number two, Belva, there are a thousand things over which we have no control. There are two things over which we do have control. Your fidelity to what you believe in, your willingness to show up every day for the fight. I showed up 35 years for the fight, and I've maintained my integrity. The last thing I want to say to residents of Oakland, this has not always been easy. This has often been very, very stressful, but I've been honored to serve this community. I've been honored this is my home. I've been honored because it gave me a, a, an opportunity to display a commitment to them and to public service. I love people. That's why I became a social worker. So, you know, that, that's, what I, that's who I am, and that's what I'm about. Um, my hope is that at some point people will see what it is that we really truly try to do. But I thank people for this opportunity. I think I'm a stronger, better, smarter first person for this process because I know a hell of a lot more Belva today than I knew five years ago. And I'm very thankful for that uh, because I can bring the broader policy and the intimacy of life on the ground in a, to, in, in a very, very real way. So I want people to know that. We did some, we did some, some I think, some excellent things. We were inclusive. We brought people together. We never tried to play the diversity. We never tried to play the, the, the game of pitting one group of people against another. We brought folks together. We created a new culture here in City Hall as well. Well, Mayor Dellums, we want to thank you so much for your 35 years of service again to this city and to this country. It's been my honor. Very few people get this honor. And thank you so much for joining us tonight.